Hi, and you've joined Allen High School's AP IB Chemistry class. We're in the midst of talking about acid-base chemistry, and now we're going to see something a little unexpected. What happens when you put a salt in water? Now, we've already talked about the fact that a salt is a soluble salt, or a stoichiometry, insoluble salts, remember from last unit or a KSP. Soluble salts are stoichiometry, and you might have thought that a salt was a neutral substance. But indeed, it is not a neutral substance. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can predict which salt is going to be a high pH or a low pH. I'm going to write out the reaction, and then I'll show you just kind of a simple crisscross method to do this. If I took this salt and added it to water, and let's write water correctly. I'm used to writing as H2O. I'm going to write water as HOH. Salt hydrolysis is the opposite of a neutralization, right? A neutralization is an acid plus base, gives you a salt plus water. Well, in theory, a salt plus water will give you back an acid and a base. So theoretically, th these are the acid and the base that we would get right? The, you can't write water as H plus and OH minus, but you can loosely think of it this way. This is simply a double replacement reaction. And NH4 is another way, NH4OH is another way of writing NH3. Now, if we were to look at this, this is a weak base. This is a strong acid. We can think of this as a tug of war over pH 7. This is much like predicting the equivalence point of a titration. Again, everything relates back to that titration curve. Stronger one wins, so we would expect this to be acidic. Now, what some people like to do when they write these is to write NH4NO3. If you're not asked to write the reaction, you can write it this way and just kind of do a circling crisscross. There's your acid. And there's your base. So that would be another way to get at the, a similar concept than, than what I just did by writing the reaction. But I think it's important for you to, to predict a salt hydrolysis reaction as well. This time I've got potassium formate. Formate is what gives uh, ant bites, red ant bites their sting. And it's HC double bond. Oh, whoops, I think I'm off my screen there. Let me do it down here for you. HC double bond OOH, that carboxylic acid group. Another name for this, there's one carbon there, so we could call this meth for one carbon, and then methane, right? Except instead of methane, we add oic acid for our organic acids, all right? So back to this, that's what that is. Potassium formate brings along the conjugate base, that formate, that conjugate base. And if we were to write this as a reverse neutralization, the base would have been KOH and the acid would have been formic acid. A couple of ways you can write it. You can write it like that with the H plus in place of the K. Um, some people like to write it as HCOOH uh, only because that makes that carboxylic acid group a little more obvious. All right, this is a strong base. This is a weak acid, stronger one wins, so this is basic, okay? Really, the reason it's basic, if you look at it, what's in solution here? CHO2 minus, which is the conjugate base of a weak acid, so it'd be plus H2O. I have a weak base present, I expect it to be basic. So there's two ways you can think of it. All right, this one plus water would yield calcium hydroxide, which is a strong base, and perchloric acid, which is a strong acid, so this would be neutral, okay? Now this one, if we did this reaction, actually this is what we get. We get HF and that base, so we get a weak acid, we get a weak base, and this is going to be near neutral. And in fact, because these Ks are very close to one another, 
it's going to be almost exactly neutral. When you have weak and weak together, remember the stronger one wins. So the one with the biggest K value would be quote unquote the winner in that case. So that's predicting. Let's see what happens in a reaction. And same old, same old, let's do some rice. So dilution, did we add volume to volume? No, we did not. Stoichiometry, do we have a strong acid, strong base, soluble salt, or any acid plus base? And the answer to that one is yes. We have potassium cyanide, which is a soluble salt. Now, I like to do just like what we did before. I'm not going to write a salt hydrolysis. I'm just going to write my stoichiometry. K plus plus CN minus, all right? is uh, the what we would have in solution. Now, you can do the SSS method. Remember, start, shift, stop, if you want. Well, we need our starting amount. This is all a one-to-one -one mole ratio. So to get our starting amount, we have to do molarity is mass over molar mass. Over, let me find my value there, 65.12 grams per mole divided by the 0 0.25 liters. That's my starting molality. That's 0 0.0177 molar KCN. But because this is a one-to-one -one molarity, that's also equal to my molarity of my CN minus. Eh, we don't care about potassium. Potassium's kind of boring. So, okay, metallic potassium's not boring. It's fun, they won't let me play with it. Um, but potassium ion is kind of boring. So what do we have? We have a weak base in solution. So we have CN minus plus H2O. Hopefully this is beginning to look somewhat familiar, especially because you've done some web assign by now. Okay. This is very much like an equivalence point on a titration curve. In fact, it's just like an equivalence point. It's worded differently. We've made the solution differently. But what ends up in solution is the same thing we would get at the equivalence point of the weak acid HCN. So I've got 0 0.0177. Water, remember, is not going to show up in our mathematics. None of this, none of this. This is a base. We always want to use B because you want to remember that if it's B, it's a two-step in and out from pH. So this is B and this is B. My KB is equal to HCN times OH minus my product over my reactant. Now, just like what we did before, we have to calculate our K because this is KB and we're given a KA. KB is, remember, KW divided by KA. So in our case, if we plug those numbers in, I'm assuming you can do that, we get 2.04 times 10 to the minus fifth. Might want to pause the video, double check my math, and double check that you know what you're doing. I'm going to get B squared. Notice I automatically neglected that B there. I'm going to get B squared over 0 0.0177. Now remember, when we have B, we have the OH minus. It is two steps to get to H plus. So if I solve this, B is 6.01 times 10 to the minus fifth. That means my pOH is minus the log of that number. It's 4.22, and it asks for my pH, which is 9.78. Now, we would have predicted that because when we add KCN from water, the base in the acid would have been KOH and HCN. This is a strong base. This is a weak acid. This is an easy way to predict. The real reason it's basic is because I have that weak conjugate base in solution. Okay, 
Let's try one more of these, and then it's on to AP questions. We have no dilution. We do have a soluble salt, and that soluble salt is going to go 100% to CH3 NH3 plus plus NO3 minus. And in the world of acids and bases, we're not too interested in that. Now, when we put that salt into solution, we have a conjugate acid of a weak base. So this is a conjugate acid. So let's set up our rice. CH3NH3 plus in equilibrium with H plus plus the amine. Remember, weak bases focus on that amine group there. Now, again, that was the lazy person's way. We could have put plus H2O, and then we would have put the hydronium ion there. I think AP is getting a little bit more particular about that, but I'm not yet. I'm still a little lazy, and you're not going to lose points on that to my knowledge. All right, so now this was my solution. It's a one to one mole ratio. And so if this is 0 0.392, because it's a one to one mole ratio, this is 0.392. You have to show that knowledge. You have to demonstrate that knowledge somehow, some way. Whether you do that whole start, shift, stop method, or you do a mole road kind of a calculation, you still have to show that ratio. I showed you the simplest. Nothing and nothing. Wow, this should be getting kind of boring to you. Now, what this is going to be, whoops, I kind of got carried away there. This would be very much like the equivalence point of a weak base. So if I had a weak base and I was titrating that with a strong acid, the, this would be what we have at the equivalence point. Remember, the equivalence point is always the conjugate equilibrium. So 0 0.392 minus A, A, and A. So you have to set up Ka. Don't, don't get sloppy and miss these steps of setting it up in symbols. Because the more you try to skip in steps, the more likely you are to make a mistake. I do it you'll do it. And we don't want to lose points for something that we really know. right? You want to be able to demonstrate the beauty of those brains. Now, I have to have a way to get Ka because they only gave me, the question only gave me Kb. Well, Ka is equal to Kw over Kb. So my Ka here, let me put it down here, is Kw divided by Kb. I'll let you do that math. Kw is assumed to be 1 times 10 to the minus 14th, unless you are told otherwise. 2.27 times 10 to the minus 11th. A squared, that means it's only one step to pH when I'm done. 100 times this is far smaller than the number in front, so I neglected that. If you crank through that math, A, which you remember is our H+, plus, is equal to 2.98 times 10 to the minus 6th. If I take minus the log of that number, I get a pH of 5.53. Okay, and that's it. Do you see how everything relates back to that equilibrium, or excuse me, that titration curve? Now, the next few videos, I'll do three AP questions to help you out. And until then, this is signing off.